nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Daniil Hunter coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it also brings up fourth. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. So that one will get him halfway to the first down marker. Seven yards makes it third and seven now. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. A loss of a yard and it brings up fourth. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. On first down, they go right back to Hunt. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Looking to throw. Open man is Westbrook complete. He was a 1,000-yard receiver during the regular season, and that's his first catch of this Super Bowl, and he picks up the first down. First down. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. Ready up. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. On first down, they'll run with Hunt, and he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They'll run with Hunt on second down. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. 
And he's going to get this inside the 30. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, OK, let's not let that happen as we take over again. That's caught over the middle by Hurst. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. They'll run on first down. Hunt, and he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. With the first touchdown of this Super Bowl, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Brandon, this is the Super Bowl. A touchdown scored in any game is big. In this one, it's massive. Extra point up and good by Walsh. And it's now a 7-0 game. And so we have the touchdown. Now here's Blair Walsh to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons offense at the line. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Check back, check back. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Murray. Got him in, it's Brown. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. They run it for the first time with Tony Pollard. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 19 yards to pick up there, move the chains. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What, is it three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. So from the 36 now, first and 10. This is Hines, and he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. At the Dolphins' 33-yard line. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now it's Hines. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. On third down, Hines. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. A 47 yard attempt. That's the end of the first quarter with the score of Dolphins seven, Falcons nothing.
And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So that's a seven play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? Ready? The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. I'm coming for you, son. I'm coming for you, son. Shot on it. Shot on it. Shoot. Bombers. Shoot. Jet bombers. Shoot. This is Hunt. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Dolphins on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and five. They're going to look to throw. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. As he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons offense at the line. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now a give, right side. It's Hines. And now off to the races, down the right side. Touchdown, Falcons. Naeem Hines, 66 yards. And the Falcons have taken the lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Dolphins at the line, ready for their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't. He's got a man complete. Pass the 20. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. D.D. Westbrook, 75 yards. And the Dolphins are going to jump back in front. Walsh adds the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. And so we have the touchdown. Now here's Blair Walsh to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. 
And he probably should have stayed in the end zone as he'll muster a return up to only the 14-yard line. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here at a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. They run the counter. Hines. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. You, you, you. You, you, you. On second down, here's Murray. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Taco Charlton just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. Well, as an offense, you know, some drives you have it, some drives you don't. And this one looks like a you don't. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it was third and long. It was screaming for a pass. I think they tried to outguess them there with the running play. They didn't fool him at all. Went in the wrong direction. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And last time the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up. Whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was yeah. real easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. Yeah, we'll see if it's that easy here. First down, it's Hunt. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll look to throw here. And incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys and plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, we talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. That's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. Give him five on the screenplay, and that'll set up a third down. 
For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted four times out of six, not bad. This is third and eight. Back to throw. And that is incomplete. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they've been moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. A carry for Foreman. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Ten yards there and a first down for the Falcons. Well, earlier this half, you were wondering how they were going to defend him. I think you used the term bottle him up at different levels. They've struggled to do that. They certainly have because when you see them approach, in order to bottle him up at different levels, that front line's got to take care of business. Otherwise, he starts to sift through. Here's Murray. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Chandler Jones in there to take him down on what will take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes on the clock in the second quarter of this Super Bowl. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. The coach will have stats and scores from earlier today in the NFL. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. The intended receiver there was Jonu Smith, and that takes us from second to third down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Murray with a third and long. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Bradley Chubb able to run him down for a loss of 12 that time. Go, 
That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Forced out to his left. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Now back to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fielded just inside the 30. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Less than 30 seconds to go in the half. Pretty good starting field position, all things considered. You'd think they definitely have time to get in the field goal range. Yes, and you get into the huddle or you come off the bench here and you've called multiple play. Trying for Brown and it's intercepted. P.J. Williams with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. That late in the clock, second quarter, why not just run it a time or two and get it into the locker room? What you're saying makes absolutely perfect sense. Run it and get out of there. But I'm just wondering if the pressure of today's uh, NFL and the high-powered offenses that you're facing may have forced them into saying, let's try and get some more points. They go play action here on first down. Going deep for Hopkins. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. DeAndre Hopkins once again the intended target. But now it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. This time they stay on the ground. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. So it's halftime here on sports grandest stage in the Super Bowl. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. These two teams sat through a longer-than-usual 30-minute wait, but we're back in action here in this Super Bowl. Let's go! About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. On second and nine, Murray. He'll find Hines out of the backfield. It's a gain of six on the play, and it'll be third down. 
And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And this will do the job nicely as that'll be out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. And a short pickup here as he'll get across the 10 to the 11-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to it. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Let's go. 15, line. 15, line. Push him back. Push him back. Lead him. Lead him. On first down, he'll drop to throw. It's complete to Hopkins. Defenders giving chase, but I don't think they're going to get there. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins, 77 yards. And the Dolphins are able to extend that advantage. Extra point up and good by Walsh. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. And so we have the touchdown. Now here's Blair Walsh to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons offense at the line. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Murray again, second and ten. The connecting here with DJ Shark. His first catch of this Super Bowl, and it'll be good for a first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Murray now on first down. And an alley to run. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Murray now. And nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. His struggles finding open receivers continue. I don't know the last time I saw him this inconsistent throwing the football. It would be hard to find a date when he was this inconsistent. You know, in his locker, he keeps the word poise printed on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. He needs to find that poise right now. He certainly does. In fact, I would suggest he laminate it. On second down, it's Potter. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw, it's Murray. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Prince Amukamara. 
And he will take it across midfield and down to the 45. You've got to know as a quarterback, it's going to be tough to outthink this guy in the defensive backfield. He's been at it 11 years now, so he knows all the ins and outs of the position. And he's in the right spot there to come up with the interception. On the set. 53 at the mic. Here we go, here we go. General West. And to give this time to the tailback. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. At the 41-yard line. Come on, set, eight, three. Mike, Mike, so don't say nothing. Get it. They'll set up the throw. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. They'll give him a yard on the play, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. They'll drop the throw. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. First and 10 at the 19. Murray now, perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven, it's first and 10. They run with Hines. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Now second and seven from the 23. Under 10. Under 10, 10. Check safety, check safety. Check three, three. Check four, check four. Check 99, check 99. They run again with Hines. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28 yard line. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? when the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Here's Hines. And it would appear he's going to be short of a first down as he stopped right around the 29. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. They do go for it. It's Murray. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. They only needed a few inches, but still some anxious moments there. But they do convert on fourth. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Murray now on first down. He's going deep for Brown. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Back to the air on second down, it's Murray. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. The D tackle Sheldon Richardson came barreling in for the sack. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. 
they keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Murray going to throw. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And they work this right up field across the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Murray now just 7 of 15 so far, but he's got a first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. The linebacker, Preston Brown, brings him down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. They stay on the ground again. It's Hines. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Falcons on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This time they face a third and two. Now Murray. Dolphins rush gets home, down he goes. Sheldon Richardson able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. How about that part of his second sack of the game, and that puts him in some pretty good company. 17 guys have had two sacks in the previous 52 Super Bowls, but only three have had the record number of three sacks in this game. And we've got the list here. If he gets another one and everyone behaves nicely, we might just list those out for him. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Second and 15. The open man is Westbrook. Over 100 yards receiving for him now in the Super Bowl. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You take in charge. And pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. The last run got six, now second and four. On play action, they'll throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one who has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. It's fourth down. Thank you. 
His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. Here's Murray back near his goal line. And this one complete to Smith. And he's able to get this one up to the eight-yard line this time. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. On second down, it's Hines. And he's only able to work this from the eight to the 10 for a pickup of two. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. They control the clock, they control the ball. And that way, you often control the game. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Throwing on first down is Murray. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. On first and ten, here's Murray. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Darius Slay with a pick. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt and in a big way. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Tackled by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. Brings up second and nine at the 17-yard line. Here we go, set, 18 Gator. You remember me, you remember me. Second and nine now. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. Daniil Hunter, his second sack of the night. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He was trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. And someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. To throw is Murray. Dancing to his left. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Taco Charlton able to collapse the pocket, get to him, and drop him for a loss of a yard. 
Another try after the first down sack. Murray. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. I want to go back to something you said in the first quarter about is it, winning. Is, is it a positive? It is a positive. Okay. About winning the turnover battle. As a visiting team, as an underdog, you were right. They've done just that, and look where it's gotten them. It's part of the formula. When you go on the road, as you mentioned, being an underdog, winning the turnover battle is a big key, and this one's playing out in this one. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here's Murray. And they move this all the way down to the nine. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. Here's Murray. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. So first down went in the wrong direction. They're at the 13-yard line. Here's second and goal. Throwing now is Murray. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Brings up third down and 13. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Murray now, third and goal. And he's gonna go down. Sacked right around the 17. And the Lombardi Trophy has a home in South Florida. The Miami Dolphins are your Super Bowl champions. And when this moment comes, I think you look back at all the blood, sweat, and tears, the offseason, the workouts, training camp, week one, two, three, all building up now to say you're a Super Bowl champion. It's worth it. It certainly is, and rarely do we have a team that hoists the Lombardi Trophy that didn't have their share of bumps along the way, didn't have to face some adversity in the journey, and now they get to just enjoy it and revel in it. And all offseason, They'll be signing their autographs with Super Bowl champion underneath it. And they are the Super Bowl champs. The Lombardi Trophy is theirs, and so are bragging rights for an entire season. And what a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job. Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.